Humanist Perspective, presented by the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association. Following are a few principles of humanism. We're committed to the use of science and reason for understanding the universe and for solving human problems. We're skeptical of untested claims of knowledge, but we're open to new ideas. We are concerned with securing justice and fairness in society and in ending intolerance and discrimination. We are committed to the total separation of religion and government. We affirm humanism as a realistic alternative to the theologies of despair and the ideologies of violence. We reject the concept of an afterlife and believe in living a full and rewarding life here and now. We value and respect each individual's right to judge and lead their lives according to their own position as long as it's respectful of other people living in a free society. We hope you enjoy today's program and others in the weeks to follow. Hello, welcome to the New Orleans Humanist Perspective, brought to you by the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association. My name is Beth Deitch and I'll be your host for the show. I'm a membership coordinator for NOSHA and I sit on the board of directors. And you can go to NOSHA.org to find out more information about us or about humanism in general. And now, before I introduce our guest today, our regular viewers may be thinking, oh, geez, yet another new host. And I'm the last one, at least, that you have to get used to. Now, Harry could do everything himself, but it takes several people to fill his shoes. So you saw Charlotte last month, our president. Before that, the month before that, were two shows from Jim, our vice president. And then you're going to get these two shows from me, and then we'll cycle back around to Jim, Charlotte, me. And so that's the way it's going to go from here on out. So you'll get me for this show and the next one. Now, I'd like to introduce my guest for today, who, this being my first time doing this, I wanted someone who I knew and who was fabulous, which I have here. Can't imagine anybody more fabulous than Marshall Harris. You can do everything. Bum -bum. <laughs> He's an actor and a singer, a writer, <coughs> a producer, as well as a talented visual artist and muralist. He's the owner of Art Boy Productions, which produces small stage shows, cabarets, fundraisers, and special events tailored to client requests. And he's also the co-owner of a new Mardi Gras crew and working on his annual holiday benefit show. And he's a fellow member of NOSHA. So welcome, Marshall. Yay, hi. Thank you very much. Love your Good hat. Good to be here. Thank You're you. You're looking super Have spitty. to come being me, right? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So first, let's talk about your uh, production company, this Art Boy Productions. Art you sent Boy me a bunch of pictures. <coughs> And right. there's one that you sent me that has you playing Cupid. <laughs> yeah. If we could maybe get that picture up. <laughs> and I figured that has to be one of your little tailored events well, or something. Well, I'll tell you what. That's one of my tailored costumes for sure. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, I, um, that's a, actually a gig that I got from my friend Carl Mack. He's an event uh -huh. planner, and he also is a, a talent agent. Yeah. So when he needs unique things, he calls me, and he has a gazillion people to call on for uh, all kind of things, musicians, actors, yeah. singers. But uh, this was a wedding uh, out there by um, the Mardi Gras world. Yeah. So they wanted a cupid out there, and I said, That's hey, great. I got some wings, why not, <laughs> Did right? Did you do that, like, during the ceremony when they kissed? I something? went and did some photos with the couple, and then we walked the room and took pictures with the guests and stuff like that. Oh, that's fun. It was fun. fun. It was a lot of fun. It's part of, like, my modeling things I do mm -hmm. on the side, you know. Mm -hmm. but, so what uh, else do you do with Art Boy Productions? Art Boy Productions. Well, it started out Art Boy Productions with my mural work. Mm -hmm. So I called it Art Boy Productions just because I said, well, God, I hang out of a name. I'm getting a lot of clients. And I was doing a lot of mural work at the time in my early 20s. Um, and so then I fell into a little modeling work, mm -hmm. and then I fell into stage work. Mm -hmm. Somehow that name just kind of carried over to that. It, it can umbrella over all those things easy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, my nickname when I was a child is uh, Boy, B-O-Y. <laughs> That's imaginative. Yeah, so, <laughs> so my aunts and my cousins and my brother and sister, everybody, when I hear the word boy, I look because <laughs> I feel like it's somebody I really know, you know. <clears throat> but, that's where the boy comes in in art, of course, because art was, um, it was my escape 
most of my life. Yeah. Painting, yeah. drawing, and all that kind of stuff. Well, and, and so now you're finding escape in the stage. In the stage, yeah. I've seen some of your shows. I saw your Rat Pack <laughs> thank show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I saw your holiday show at Harrah's, which we're going to get to that in a minute. But first I want to talk about this uh, new Mardi Gras crew that you're... New Mardi Gras crew. Y'all, I'm so excited about this one. Crew of stars. The crew of stars. Yes. Celebrating the star in you. And you know, in honor of that, yes. I thought, because we have such a boring oh, little man. set here. Yay. We need we this. Would, yeah. Here we go. Grab some stars. All right. <laughs> now I really feel at home. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you see that, Carl? Mack? I know. <laughs> Well, my friend and I, Carl Mack, we had a lot of fun in the crew of Satyricon. Mm -hmm. We were royalty consecutive. I was king one year, he was queen behind the next year. And um, we just wanted to expand things. We wanted to bring more production to uh, mm -hmm. a Mardi Gras ball. And most Mardi Gras balls are kind of set with tradition, which is great. But then when you're kind of like I am, I can't stay in a box long. Mm -hmm. I just felt like I want to try something different and new. And um, I wanted a, uh, a crew that brought everybody together. Right. It could be men, women, any walk of life. Mm -hmm. Does it, you know? Uh, if you just like to have fun, we the crew mm -hmm. for you. You mm -hmm. know, we're not gonna make yeah. you jump through hoops and do all these little frat things they do sometimes, where you uh, you have to uh, do that? try out. You know, oh. They have like a little <laughs> crew parties where they kind of pick and see if you're kind of, and that's good for some, but not for me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to scrutinize anybody. They want to come, they join, we have a good time. And through the year, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to support theater mm -hmm. and production. Right. So how that works is each member gets, uh, I should have brought one, a membership card. It's like a little mm -hmm. credit card. Mm -hmm. And then we'll make deals with theater houses, okay? And then our members, the theater house, we could have a conversation with them and make a deal and say, hey, listen, we have X amount of members. If you want to do a special deal for our members, we'll show up on a Friday night or whatever mm -hmm. night. It might be a slow night for them. We can bring all our members there mm -hmm. that night and get, we'll have our little car. We'll get like a $5 off or some kind of discount that we can broker with each house, you see. Right, right. So I and think so are the uh, members just, numbers, uh, you know? the members are just um, entertainment people or the no, members can be any. It's a ball for all. Anybody mm -hmm. can join. Uh, yeah, it, we did. You did you know, send us a little uh, uh, picture of you and Carl Mack. If we could maybe put that up yeah, there of the crew. That's of stars. the crew of stars there. there. We're, <clears throat> now we're going to have a, a huge press conference tomorrow, oh, really? and we're, we're, you should see more about us in the paper and on the television. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to really push to get membership going because I think it's an important thing to bring people together. Mm -hmm and support something I love, which is theater and performance. And I want to support musicians, singers, dancers, set designers, mm -hmm. you know, costumers, all, every, you know, all kind of art. You want to take a stab at our set here? Well, you see, that can happen. <laughs> <coughs> we'll talk I after the like, show I feel here. like we can slip it up a little. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> but the thing is, how will, we, how will we help? Throughout the year, we're going to work on little projects for, for theater groups, mm -hmm. especially smaller theater groups who need a hand, you know? Right. And then what we there's do. There's so much small theater. Oh, there's a lot of small theater. A lot yeah. of Mikado. That whole Rampart seeing, area is popping up. Yeah. yeah. Well, we saw you at the Lizzie Borden show. That was very that cool. That was fantastic. A great venue for it. You right, know. right. So. And uh, I've been going to see the NOLA Project. Yeah. Their little shows. There seem to be all these little theater oh, yeah. troops just popping up all New over Orleans the place. New Orleans lends itself perfectly for that. Yeah. There's a lot of little odd nooks that you know work well for a, a show it, it seems like these places sometimes are tailor fit for the shows that they're putting right on, you know what right I mean? so well lizzie seemed to be an art gallery right that's the well, thing they seem to repurpose uh, things that aren't even right. stages going well we can throw right. a stage up here right. sure it'll fit <laughs> <laughs> we sure. were a little close to the stage we had vip tickets so we got to be in the front place. row so it was like oh hi i could touch them um, but, uh, i liked it in that intermission yeah. you could browse the, through yeah. the art you know yeah so. which was really really fantastic yeah so so, um, so if I were to join, yeah. then what would that mean? What would I do? What well, would I get? Well, memberships are $100, mm -hmm. and that's the cheapest going in town, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, then you, we're, we're having a ball. We're not having a crew where you get on the floats and all, mm -hmm. okay? It's not a parade. It's just a ball, and that's considered our party of the year for our members. So mm -hmm. through the year we work and do fundraisers and things to support each other in our community, we're going to yeah. create a network where, let's say, uh, musicians can come on a list or so, mm -hmm. and, or, and a singer or such, and some singers trying to put together a band they can come to crew of stars and look on that thing and network among our members and we can kind of cross promote each other that right, way you see right right so you can build a show 
we, we hope in this would come, where you can build a show within our network. Mm -hmm. And then it become more, you know, it's power, yeah. power in numbers. You right, know? right, so that, right. So that if somebody so feels like, gosh. Cross-pollination of ideas. Right. And, and I'm all yeah. by myself. I, I want to do a lot of things. Jump in the crew of stars, and you're now a part of a big network of people who do the same kind of work you do. Yeah, or, or, or looking at that same goal. You fantastic. Know? So uh, that, that, to me, uh, is how I felt in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you need the help, right. but you know where you're going to get it. Right. So I'm trying to create a group of friends that can help you get it. Fantastic. You know? Fantastic. Um, so I also mentioned that you're working on um, a holiday show. That yeah. are you, was last year the first year you it did that? It was the that? first year. Now yeah. I get, we have a picture of the flyer from last year's show. Uh, yes, of the holidays <laughs> yeah. at Harrah's, uh, and that is you in oh, the little yeah. um, what is that Nutcracker outfit. Yeah. You, you, you put show together, you got to put it's your adorable. face on the picture. It's you adorable. Know? And, and you can see the name of all sorts of local talent. Yeah, and, and I like to do that. It and if I do a little tiny year. show, I'm telling you, on my poster, I like to put everybody's name on the poster. Yeah. Because, look, their mama's coming. You know, their grandma, they want <laughs> well, to see the their kids' Well, the whole thing was name, just a parade you know? of New Orleans talent. Yeah. You know, the top it was people really and the best voices. An eclectic and the, group of people. The funnest, funnest performers and yeah. that... And Hobby I like to bring people limbs. together that are different. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? We had a drag performer, a comedian, right. an opera singer. We had the, the New Orleans Symphony Chorus. Right, you know? right. We had a good mix of talents right. from here right. on that one stage. Well, that's very New Orleans. Yeah. You know, to have that's sort us. of high class with, with, with more burlesque kind sure. of things good, all on the same mix, stage. You know, and that right. was a benefit for... P-Flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, P-Flag is parents and friends of gays and lesbians and transgender. Lesbians They're adding and things on because, you know, the world's flag. changing and we're oh, changing with so it. So it's P-Flag? <laughs> 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 you got to figure and that yeah, out. P-Flag T, Look, don't forget intersex. <laughs> they should just put a big heart. A big heart would be good enough because right. that's a club of love, I'm yeah. telling you. If you've ever been, they have their... little. Yearly ceremony at uh, UNO, and the first time I went, ceremony. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's where they give these uh, scholarships. Oh, where they give out? Oh, I knew and they did scholarships. I didn't know there was yes. a ceremony that went with that. Wow! So let me tell you, you uh, you don't leave not with your heart, you know, really yeah. into what the club's about because yeah. what they do is they help raise monies to help um, people in the gay community. Mm -hmm. uh, move on in their schooling because sometimes look parents put their kids out when mm -hmm. they say I'm, I'm a gay person right, or right. you know or, or they're just their life is, I think is, it's like the number one cause of teen homelessness it's a little yeah. tough okay so yeah. here's P-Flag saying well if this kid or this person wants to go through college why shouldn't somebody help them right and so that's where our community can come in through P-Flag because what they do is they write the check to the to the school mm -hmm. or, the, or the dormitory or whatever needs it they don't just hand the money so they make right. it the money goes to the right place right. books you know so it's they stole my heart so I was like mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. we need to do something I want to do something for them that's kind of like with my signature on it thing yeah you know, and I pulled some friends together and we pulled it, it off. felt very martial it was good because you have that eclectic sort of uh, uh, air about you well, so I like to it, mix it up yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so um you know you mentioned about the visual art yeah. and the uh, and the um, murals, and uh, I think I mentioned that you are a fellow member of NOSHA, that you are a non-believer in any deities or anything. I'll take it, yes. And yet one of the pictures you sent me, <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw this and I was like, <laughs> W.T. F. Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is this some other Marshall Harris? Right. <laughs> if we can put up the picture of the of that one, now look, of that's you talent right did, there. I mean, it's gorgeous painting. Yeah, it's yeah. a wonderful reproduction of Dali's Christ. Right. But you doing big religious murals? Right. I tell you, <laughs> at the time, it was an illustration for Easter. You know. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm one that um, I'm very accepting. Uh -huh. uh, someone believes this, this, this is. I'm cool. You mm -hmm. know. I believe this. So all I want is my seat at the table. Right. And I don't want the stairs, you know. I don't do it, so I don't want it. Right. So I always dish out what I'd like to get back. Mm -hmm. So when they ask me to do it, I don't cringe at religion. I really don't. I, I, and in fact, the world needs religion. Please do not get rid of religion. Why? Because I think people need these outlets. Some people. Yeah. And some people don't. Mm -hmm. So that's how I look at being an atheist, you uh -huh. know. Because I feel like that's my choice. Right. Please let me live in, live in peace with right. that choice. And my aim is not to hurt people or make fun or really ridicule anybody right. or even 
proselytize them to be yeah. what I am. You know? Oh, yeah. Because, no, you know, as long as they don't let it influence their voting, though. That. Well, you know, but even, even that, you know, uh, when it comes to politics, you know, I mean, the golden rule is supposed to be that it's separated from religion, right? But we know how that is. But yeah. um, I, I, I agree with you on that. As long as it doesn't affect politics, because politics is the umbrella over all of us. Yeah. You know, and how fair is that? Yeah. You know, so. So, yeah, because mostly I'm the same way of sort of live and let live, especially yeah. if you just, you know, like my right. mom was a believer who believed in this nice, warm, fuzzy God, you know, who <laughs> like okay. would let me into heaven even though right, right. I'm an atheist lesbian because I'm a good person. And <laughs> I don't know where she got this <laughs> God because it wasn't out of the Bible, but it made right. her feel good, <laughs> you know, and that's right. fine. But I do kind of worry about people getting into too much magical thinking and, you know, relying mm -hmm. on that when right. it comes time well, to solve real human things, problems. A lot of things we see in the news today I mean in the past couple of years I have just been shocked what the things people do on behalf of what religion has told them mm -hmm. not one specific religion I'm not talking anyone but you know right. there are some pretty wild ideas out there right and I just want to be a part of my own wild ideas. <laughs> I don't want to hurt people. Right. You know, on behalf of something. Right. Uh, from centuries that someone told somebody centuries ago. Well, and now oh, we and have these RIFRA laws, what Religious Freedom Restoration Act mm. things that are like, it's my religious right to right. be mean to you. <laughs> It starts to go over the line <laughs> a little bit. Well, I don't throw stones, yeah. and I certainly don't want to catch a stone either. So, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. So, so I mean, were you a believer when you painted this? How long ago was um, that? I never went to church. Because it says you're only 22 in the article. At the time, um, well, yeah, I really didn't have a choice now. in my head. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't feel I was one way or another. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't feel strongly about not being religious on it and feel strongly about looking for religion you know yeah I just was doing my were you thing raised and in a church? My, my, my mom was really open about things and she let us she never let us feel forced about mm -hmm. you know she did bring us to some churches and say you know would you want to go to this or that we did that but you know it was never a forced thing right. and if we didn't want to go Are we you didn't. from here I'm from New Orleans, yeah. yeah. So would yeah. that be Catholic? I'm born churches? over there. Yeah, they mm -hmm. were Catholic back then. You know, my family, my mm -hmm. mom comes from that. But, um, you know, New Orleans Catholic, Catholic is a unique Catholic. I know. You know? So People are culturally Catholic. <laughs> right. The way that people are culturally Jewish <laughs> in a lot of other parts of the right, country. Right, So, you know, and I think, you know, I don't know, right. maybe New Orleans Catholic is more accepting right. of a lot of things, right? Hey, well, yeah, the whatever, people, they right? do the things because it's just the rituals you do, but they don't, they don't, you know, they do the, the <laughs> baptism because it's what you do when you have a baby and right. for the grandma. They don't right. really believe the baby is sinful. <laughs> 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 you know? Oh, it's like, the, the, the sort of, that's what I mean by culturally Catholic. Right, is, right, right. Is we like our rituals. Right. We like our symbols, but right. we aren't really going to buy into that really right. whack stuff. <laughs> That's right, right. And at the same time, I really don't want to laugh at religion because I really, yeah. I respect things. No, I think it's things. great you know, I really that people can it, yeah. take what is useful. That's right. And ignore what isn't. That's exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. You know, because that's what the Muslim faith is dealing with right now. Yeah. They're like, what are we going to choose? Is what we're going to live by? Or, you know, the, right. What is it? Sh surreal? Whatever. Sharia. Yeah, it's way yeah. back. Yeah. And they're doing stuff back when wow. cavemen. I'm like, yo, come on. You can't treat people the same way, you know, now. But, you know. That's yeah, a whole I think their holy books do have a lot more um, <laughs> specifics about how you're supposed to live every single day. Right. So I think in that way it's harder for people to ignore it. But clearly well, there are Muslims who do. You know, I, right, I taught right, yeah. college for, for some years and would have, for, even though I had a psych degree, I was for some years in business school. And I would sometimes have female Muslim students in my business school classes. Mm -hmm. And, and I kind of think, you've got to be something liberal to even be here. You know, that right. you are a woman getting a college education I in see. business, no less. Uh -huh. And I was like, yeah, they're probably like a lot of Christians right. who are right. who have very much liberalized. What it once was. Right, what right, it right, once right. was. Well, that's where we're lucky to be in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, a lot of people don't realize how lucky we are until you start seeing those things on the well, news of people's heads are rolling on the floor. Right, I mean, but then we have people almost wanting to do that with like the, um, that's the guys the who won't stand point. up for the pledge yeah. and and then there's yeah. others threatening, saying they should be shot for this and wow. it's like you're missing the yeah. whole point. So we really, do, we really do have to stick to <laughs> yeah. the, what we are here and what we stand for in America. Mm -hmm. And the, to me, I think that the 
it's a big fear for me when I think about politics is that they that to let religion creep in too much into politics right. because that starts to change what we were founded on here. Right, know? right, right. And to not really understand that religious freedom has to be for everybody. Everybody. That's you know, right. That's um, right. Yeah, and uh, uh -huh. so cuz cuz it does <coughs> seem like it's like well as long as you're agreeing with the majority, you have the freedom to do that. But when you voice a minority opinion, you start getting death threats. And, right. you know, I, I don't know if our current political climate is ramping up that rhetoric or what, but it, right. or if it's just more covered, more out there. Right. It does seem like we're kind of in this, maybe it's a backlash. I think it's because we're so world connected nowadays. Perhaps. Everything's connected. Yeah. I mean, if somebody's scratching in France, we hear it here. Yes, true. Yeah. So yeah. it's like we're all so connected, so that's why we're seeing so much more, you know? Mm -hmm. And then with the internet, in a way, that's all been the last 20 years, you know? Yeah. We're seeing it all. Yeah, and I sort of do wonder if that's somehow the source of some of the uh, people who are really freaking out, is that it, you can't keep the rest of the world out anymore. Right. You know, especially if your parents raising your kids, right. you can't insulate them anymore. If the kid's got a phone, the kid has the world. Exactly. And, and that uh, is scary. Yeah. And so I, then I think that's when hmm. they're just flipping out that they can't, you know, make them pray in the locker room or whatever because they, it's a, it's a feeling a lack of control. I, I believe. know. Yeah. Yeah. The world's in our backyard now. Right. Right. What do you do? So what was it that made you decide to? You know, come out as atheists, call yourself atheists. Uh, I met people who were. That's yeah. it. You felt yeah. I felt comfort uh, of that. Hey, you know, they're still walking and talking. You know? <laughs> they didn't come, you know, spontaneously mm -hmm. combust. You know, and um, weren't struck by lightning anywhere. Right. And yeah, I, and I think I think that made a comfort thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I have to say, uh, it really, to be more outspoken about it, which I'm really not an advocate, and I'm not out there right. waving flags or anything, but. Being in NOSHA, I have to say, I have to give them a lot of credit because it makes me feel comfortable when I'm in a room of, you know, 80 people who right. think like I think. Yes. And they're not crazy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, there might be one that, or two crazy There is in that there. idea of sharing a world. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> We but, have yeah. a, we have our share. Of, <laughs> Everybody does. Everybody does. Everybody has. But you for know, the, the most part, the few people it's in the comfort. family here, you just like that's just the way they are and and you know but that's what I them. like about NOSHA. I like NOSHA for that reason we can still say bless their heart even, though we, say, even though we don't really things, believe in anybody well, yeah, blessing they say whatever uh, they feel that's yeah. the freedom of being in that group you yes know? yes yes so, and there are times when we've heard from people that you know some other they have friends that might not want to come because it's too negative. I don't and find that. I don't find that it's all over negative. I no. think though what they are referring to is that some people do vent. Or there debate. are some people who well and there are we have people who've been damaged by religion. And they I need see, a yeah. place uh -huh. to vent. I agree. You know, and I, I think that NOSHA always should be that place I for agree them. With that. Yeah. Sure. I'm not that kind of person. I When y'all bring in cool speakers and stuff mm -hmm. from around the nation. And yes, yes, yes. And I mean, we're humanist groups. So right. there's, you know, a, a much lot. broader uh, sort of scope of interest for mm -hmm. humanism. Right, Because, right, I right. mean, atheism is just something you don't Plus, do. you people need. feel safer to step into humanism right. just because of ridicule. Right. Outside ridicule. Right. But then, you know, as you go along, you kind of know. Right. You, know, you kind of feel your way, you know. But it's okay to let them have baby steps. So, or whatever, do you, you know? would you use, do you use that word if someone just asks I say you? I'm a humanist because yeah. I always feel like we should do for our fellow man right. now while we're here. Right. Make life comfortable and share what we have and what we know. Right. While we're here. Right. If somebody wants to come down and say good boy and pat me on the back, <laughs> I'm, go I'm good for that, you know? Yeah. But I just, I, I, a lot of things in the Bible and all, I just, I can't just go for right, it, you know? Right. So, but I don't insult people who try to show me right. things. And I know it's probably out of love because most people in churches, I think they're trying to put their best foot forward, you know? Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I think people are better than their book. Right. You know, I mean, that's I when they go through and they, they throw out the stuff about bashing babies' heads against rocks, oh. things like that. <laughs> you know, because they, they know, no, that's messed up. Exactly. <laughs> I, I like that term, better than the book. Better than you know, book, it's yeah. like, yeah, see, you have a better morality right. than what's really written there. And, right. and so as we, if, if we as a society can sort of move along from that. Um, I do kind of feel like the word atheist, though, should be 
does need to be sort of destigmatized. I get you. I get you. And I, I agree with that as well. I agree. Yeah. Because it, it used to be this, when I was younger, I thought, oh, I don't know why. What made me think? Devil worshippers or something. You know what I mean? Like it was a horrible thing. It I'm like, they don't, they don't worship devils if they don't worship anything. Well, or that we're <laughs> miserable know? people who have no hope and say life is meaningless. They confuse atheism with nihilism. Uh -huh. Whereas it's, I think, just the opposite, like you said. You yeah. know, being a humanist and an atheist means this is the real one. It's not a practice run. It's not a, right. it's not right. a try out for the Let next life. You, no God's going to come down and fix things for right. us. We're all we've got. And if we live just thinking that, even if you are really, just think, this is your track. What are you going to do with your time mm -hmm. here? What are you going to do with your time? That goes for really anybody. And don't throw it away for what you think comes after. Right. You know, I know, because there's so much we can do yeah. without relaxing and saying, I'm doing what, I'm doing these rituals or whatever, and right. that's all I need to do. Right. Because you know what? There's a lot more we should be doing as human beings. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, and I do like to use the word, I do like to use the word atheist if people have talked to me enough to know that I'm kind of a, you know, decent person. Yeah. And I had a very interesting phone <coughs> call last week when... Uh, it was, uh, I had some medical tests and I was called by a clerk to do pre-registration of things. And, you know, they're asking next of kins and things like, just all the form stuff, even though it was totally not anything dangerous. <laughs> but, and then she says, religious preference. Yeah. And I said, uh, I'm an atheist. And right. she's like, I don't have that here. Wow. And I laughed. Right. I said, well, okay, is there none? Is and there she other? Says, yeah. She's like, I guess that about covers it. None. She starts to go on and then she's, can I ask you a question? Yeah. yeah, people are curious. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. we had some, uh, we had a really nice little conversation. Mm -hmm. And the thing that definitely struck her was at one point when I said, I live a happy, fulfilled, moral life. Right. And she says, that's what I feel like, you know, everyone says you can't do that if mm -hmm. you don't have God. Yeah. And people right. do really hold right. that right. view. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then she had to pass me on to someone else to schedule. Yeah. And, uh, and said, now, now she's real religious. <laughs> and I said, don't worry, I'm not going to bring it up. Right. <laughs> right you right. know, you asked yeah. me because it was on the form, but right. I don't go. Right, I understand. Jab and at people. Right. Um, <clears throat> well, we're getting about to the end of our time. Oh. I know that just that flew was quick. by, didn't it? I know. Um, is there anything else that you want to make sure we cover? Anything else you got going on? Um, we want people to look for the show at Harrow's at Christmas yeah, time. Yeah, check out the Harrow's show. We'll have it at Harrow's usually the first Saturday in December. Mm -hmm. And join the crew of stars. Yes. Man, we're yeah. full of all kinds so what's, of talented you, people. So what's crewofstars.com? Crew of it's www.crewofstars.com, and it brings you right to our website. It explains the crew. And it tells you what your money's going to do, and it tells you how you get your little mm -hmm. card, your member card. And uh, look, my friend Carl Mack has been working his butt off. We have, he's, he's a great person to work with because he's always really uplifting and such. But um, I want to give a shout out to him and mm -hmm. thank him for doing the crew stars right. for me. It's brand new. I'm excited. And a shout out to Harry P. Greenberger because, you know, of course. he started the show. And it's, I think it's a wonderful show. And I'm glad that everybody's getting into the mix. Yeah, of it. yeah. So and keep thank it you going, so you know? much for being my first guest here. Well, I had a good you time. Know, thank you for having fantastic. me. That was fantastic. And I want to thank everybody out there for watching. And and uh, I hope that you will join us again soon for another episode of the New Orleans Humanist Perspective.